rural town of Westcliff, Colorado, population less than 700, is a leisurely three-hour drive south-southwest of Denver. It sits at 7,900 feet of elevation in the wet mountain valley, sandwiched between the wet and Sangre de Cristo mountain ranges. Westcliff was founded in 1881 and was designated Colorado's first official dark skies community in 2015, along with the nearby Silvercliff. Crossing through the wet mountains over Hard Scrabble Pass, we were treated to some dramatic rock formations. Driving windy mountain roads is great fun, but I'm so thankful for the dash cam because there was no time to gawk at the great views at the time. But leaving the pass and dropping into the valley, the Sangre de Cristos in the distance took our breath away. passed first through Silvercliff, founded in 1879 to support nearby silver mines. Just eight years later and only a mile to the west, however, Westcliff was founded because the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad bought up the land by the Great Creek and terminated a now defunct rail spur on their land. Westcliff itself is a charming little town. Although unfortunately there have been many recent business closures, there are still enough shops and restaurants open to give visitors some decent variety. Some of the transient visitors also seem to appreciate the town. Without a doubt, the Sangre de Cristo range is a major reason to visit Westcliff. They can be seen from anywhere, but the Bluff Park at the west end of town is a completely unobstructed view. It also overlooks Great Creek. Westcliff is also known for its dark skies. The International Dark Sky Program is one of the best modern ideas that I know of. Growing up, all I needed to do was step outside my house at night and a billion stars were always there. As civilization has expanded, so has light pollution and having certified dark sky areas is a blessing for us stargazers. Bluff Park even has a small observatory shelter with its own telescope. Unfortunately, it was closed at the time due to COVID restrictions. I've always been fascinated by the Greek constellations. Cassiopeia, or Cassopeia in Greek, is one of the easiest to spot. A flattened W of five stars. She was a vain and boastful queen cursed to sit on a celestial throne for eternity spending half the year upside down as further punishment. The Greeks, of course, weren't the only people who saw figures in the sky. Some American tribes of the Pacific Northwest see these stars as a stretched deer or elk skin. Orion the Hunter, Orion in Greek, is one of the most well-known of the constellations. 
I need to invest in a wider angle lens to capture all of the stars, but it was still a joy to be able to get this much. The three stars that form the belt are the easiest to spot. In the former Spanish colonial world, these are seen as either the Three Marys or the Three Kings. The Apache and Ute tribes see them as three vertebra of a deer or mountain goat. The stars that form Orion's belt and sword are seen by the Arapaho as a bow and lance fire-making drill kit. The bright Orion's nebula is the center of the flame. Southeast from Westcliff, back up into the wet mountains about 30 minutes away is the truly unique destination of Bishop Castle. Built by his own two hands right on the side of the highway, Jim Bishop's self-proclaimed impressive monument to perseverance needs to be seen to be believed. In 1959, at the age of 15, his parents bought the land with $450 he had saved initially to build a family cabin. Growing up in the nearby plain city of Pueblo, Bishop loved the wet mountains. The area is magnificent. The drive through the San Isabel National Forest is reason enough to visit the area. What started as a simple cabin, 60 years, many lawsuits, and countless rocks later, the only way to describe the first time you see this one man continual work in progress is... Whoa! Throughout the construction, he's had fights with at least the IRS, the Bureau of Land Management, Custer County, and the Department of Transportation. I suppose those were the inspiration for this entry sign. Regardless of any politics or bureaucratic battles, Bishop's personal obsession is worth exploring and donating to his efforts. For the drive home, we went back over the wet mountains and at the town of Florence, we decided to drive through the Phantom Canyon. The 30-mile dirt road climbs up to 9,500 feet 
following a narrow gauge mining rail line that was completed in 1894 but washed out in a 1912 flash flood. During that brief period, several mining camps popped up along the route. Only a few survive today as road markers, and only one, Adelaide, can be found by searching Google Maps. The steep, rocky cliffs are very close to the road in parts. They must be perfect for rock climbing because we saw a few groups along the drive. The Adelaide location is significant, not just because you can find it on Google Maps, but also because the nearby bridge over Eight Mile Creek is the only remaining bridge from the old rail line. Adelaide Bridge was one of the few bits of evidence of the old railway. The two narrow one-way tunnels were clear signs as well, as were these really narrow cuts in the rock. We were lucky that nobody was coming the other way. Well, almost nobody was coming the other way. After clearing the upper mouth of the canyon, we were able to stop and look back on the Sangre de Cristos, still beautiful in the distance. The town of Victor, well past its heyday, still has an historic charm and nearby operational gold and silver mines. We stopped for a look around and a quick lunch. One guy working at the general store, which doubles as the post office, said the town gets a lot of money for upkeep from the Colorado Lottery Fund. It was good to see the proceeds of this program in action actually benefiting a community.
Heading out of town, we drove past the mining operations. They weren't at all what we were expecting, but they were an impressive sight. If you like this video and want to see more of our explorations, hit like and subscribe on our channel. Thank you.